This is part 16 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss soap falls in WCF. This is continuation to part 15, so please watch part 15 before proceeding. In part 15, we have learned that WCF serializes exceptions to soap falls before reporting the exception information to the client. This is because exceptions are not allowed to be passed through a WCF service channel. SOAP falls are in XML format and hence are platform independent. A typical SOAP fault contains fault code, fault reason, detail and there are several other XML elements as well. But most of the time as a developer we are interested in these XML elements of the SOAP fault. The detail element can be used to include any custom XML. We'll discuss more about this detail element in a later video session, but for now understand that a typical SOAP fault contains fault code, fault reason, and detail elements. Now, SOAP faults are formatted based on SOAP 1.1 or SOAP 1.2 specification. So the format of the SOAP message depends on the binding that we have used to expose the service. Basic HTTP binding uses SOAP 1.1, whereas the rest of the built-in WCF bindings uses SOAP 1.2. For the complete differences between SOAP 1.1 and 1.2, you can refer to this article right here on the slide. The differences are not that important from a developer perspective because WCF formats the messages automatically based on the binding we have used to expose our WCF servers. Now, to view the SOAP fault messages, we need to enable message logging in WCF and we have discussed how to do that in part 9. So if you're new to enabling message logging, please watch part 9. So let's flip to the um, calculator service that we worked with in the previous session and let's go ahead and enable message logging. And to do that, let's right click on the application configuration file, select this option, edit WCF configuration select diagnostics the first thing that we need to do is enable log auto flash and we need to enable message logging as well and we want to log the entire message so let's turn this option log entire message to true let's save the changes so within our web.config file we should have some code basically to log the WCF uh, messages now if you look at the binding that we are using, notice that we are using basic HTTP binding. Okay, so since we are using basic HTTP binding, the messages will be formatted according to SOAP 1.1 specification. And also notice that at the moment include exception detail in false is set to true, but let's change this to false. So we are basically telling don't include exception details in the SOAP fault that is returned to the client. With these settings, let's go ahead and run the WCF service. Let's go ahead and run the client application. So let's try to divide number 10 uh, you know, by 2 just to make sure this works as expected. And let's try to divide number 10 by 0. So we are going to get an exception. So this is expected and look at what we get back. We get a fault exception back um, you know, and this is a, the general fault exception. This doesn't tell anything about the exception that has occurred on this service. But then let's go ahead and inspect the message log. And in order to inspect that message, let's go ahead to the Visual Studio, open the project in Windows Explorer and notice that we have got this message log file. Let's open this using Trace Viewer and if we look at this last message right here now look at that we've got a soap envelope and within that a soap body basically I have already copied this XML into this image and pasted this in the presentation look at that basically we've got a soap envelope which has got a soap body and within the body we have got a fault a soap fault and notice that the SOAP fault at the moment contains fault code and fault string. Fault code is something like internal service fault there and then the fault string you know gives us that general description of the error that has occurred. Okay now we don't have if you look at this slide right here we said you know it's going to contain fault code, fault reason and detail elements but if you look at this image right here we only have fault code and fault reason you know it's actually called here in SOAP 1.1 as fault string but in SOAP 1.2 it called as 
default reason. Um, okay, but then we don't have the detail element here. That's basically because we didn't want to include exception detail within the SOAP message. So if we set, you know, include exception detail in false to true, that's when we will get a detail element. Let's actually turn that option and see how the message changes. So let's close this trace viewer. Let's go to our calculator service and let's set this to true. Save the changes. Let's close the service host, rerun it once again. Let's actually refresh this page. Let's try to divide number 10 by 0. So look at that. Now we get the exception information. Again, it's still a soap fault. And if we go back to our message log, and if you look at the last message, look at that. Now we have got fault code, fault string, and detail elements. So it's the same thing that I've pasted here. So we have detail element, and then within that we have got the exception detail. Basically, you know, if there are any inner exceptions, what is the message? Look at that, the message is basically attempted to divide by zero, and we have the complete stack trace as well. Okay, so basically we have those three elements within SOAP fault, and this is SOAP 1.1. And now if we want to view the SOAP 1.2 fault message, then there is some setting that we have to do. First of all, we need to change binding to WS HTTP binding instead of basic HTTP binding. So let's go ahead and do that first. So here at the moment we are using basic HTTP binding, but let's go ahead and use WS HTTP binding. That's another binding. We'll discuss more about these bindings in a later video session. Okay. And with this change, let's actually close the service host and rerun this once again. And we need to update our proxy classes for the client because we have changed the binding. So let's go ahead and update the service reference. And then let's go ahead and run the client once again. So now let's try to divide number 10 by 0. So we get attempted to divide by zero because if you recollect uh, within our application configuration file, we are still saying include exception details and false. That is set to true. So that's why we see the exception information. And if we go back to the trace viewer, let's actually close this and reopen it again. And look at this now. There are several messages. There are 24 traces. And if I look at the last one, and if you look at the message, we don't see that SOAP fault. Okay, that's basically because you know to view the SOAP 1.2 fault message, we need to change the binding, which we have already done. But by default, message security is turned on with you know WS HTTP binding. Okay, we need to set the security mode for WS HTTP binding to none. You know, because of that message security, we are not able to see the actual SOAP fault. So for now, let's go ahead and set you know the security mode for WS HTTP binding to none. And to do that, basically, you know, we need to include this bindings element. And for WS HTTP binding, we basically need to set security mode to none. So let's go ahead and do that within the app.config file. So under service model, let's include bindings. And we are interested in WS HTTP binding. So binding security. So basically, we need to set the mode attribute of security to none. So let's go ahead and do that. And that's it. So let's go ahead close this service that's running. Let's also close the trace viewer. And let's rerun the service host. And then let's also update the service reference. And then let's run the client. So let's divide number 10 by 0. So we get that exception. Let's go back and open the trace log. And now, 
when we look at the last message we should get look at that you know now the messages are, are sl slightly you know the format of the soap message is slightly different this is soap 1.2 um, you know the messages are formatted according to SOAP 1.2 specification and you know so that we can see it properly this one is when we have set exception detail include exception detail and false um, to false but this is the one that we have got right now because we have set include exception detail in false to true and look at that we have again a SOAP envelope there is a header there and within the body look at that we have got a SOAP fault and then we have code, you know, the fault code basically. So here it says receiver. And then again, the value there is internal service fault. And then we have, you know, look at the reason here. There's the fault code and there's the fault reason. The reason is attempted to divide by zero. And again, we have details, element, and then the exception information is there, including the stack trace. So basically, this is SOAP 1.2 fault you know when include exception detail in false is set to true in a similar fashion this is soap 1.2 fault when include exception detail in false is set to false basically when we set it to false you know look at that we only have a fault code and a reason we don't have that detail element there All right um, so basically if we don't want to display you know this yellow screen of death to the end users we can actually catch that fault exception and display a meaningful information and maybe log this fault to you know maybe um, a log file or to a database table so that we can have a look at that later and then do whatever we want to do but for now let's actually catch that fault exception within the client application and to do that, let's include a try block here. And then include a catch block. And that's basically fault exception. And this fault exception class, if you look at the namespace, it's present in system.service model namespace. So make sure you have included that using statement there. So fault exception, let's actually call this fault exception and then you know in the label that we have on this page we want to say fault exception dot whatever message that's present okay or you know you can write code to log this fault exception somewhere and then display a meaningful info you know message to the client if you want to all right let's go ahead and run the client application let's try to divide number 10 by 0 look at that you know, instead of that hello screen, we are displaying a message to the end user. You attempted to divide by zero. Right, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.